ended. Right, welcome to uh, the tutorial for drawing in Toon Boom. Uh, I'm going to try and show you some of the features and uh, hopefully explain some of the stuff. Um, I'm going to put in a new tutorial. Um, and I'm going to go and sort out the format. I'm going for 24 frames uh, HD TV. I could go for a large web anim animation, perhaps. Um, I'll, I'll go for that, this one. It depends on where you, what you want to export, so I'm just playing around with that at the moment just to show you how you can change that, alter that. Okay, so I'm going to create that. So now I've come in directly into the workspace. If you remember, we were in um, scene planning. Uh, this was the view we I left you with, uh, and this is where sometimes you might to workspace and go into drawing. I wouldn't go into full screen drawing until you kind of just got your head round drawing first of all. We might need it at some stage later on for kind of swift lines and things like that. Anyway, we're going into drawing. Okay, and this is drawing mode. So this is the bit where you do all the drawing for your animation. Um, this is the sort of drawing area, obviously the tools here, um, like tables and stuff. But this is the exposure sheet. This is the colour palette. You can set your colour palettes. Um, you can play around with the colours in there. You can add a new colour, so I could, let's just say, I've got all these colours that are the standard ones, um, but I could kill them all perhaps. <coughs> or I could add to them, add a new colour, comes down the bottom, or I can kind of set up a new one, brand new palette. So I'll set a new palette. So it starts with the default, which is black. <clears throat> okay, and then I can add to that. It gives me another line which is new too. So I can then go into new too and change the color. And I can set my colors right. Okay, now you can see I've got an orange and uh, a black. And that's in my color palette. I can then call that something if I want to call it uh, a name. I think there's a way we can do that. Rename palette. And we'll call it um, tutorial. So now this is the tutorial palette, I can continue to add to it, I can use it again in other other scenes perhaps, so I might do one scene and then move on and I've still got the same palette to work from um, when I'm colouring my characters uh, and developing things further. So there's the palettes, uh, we can go to the pen tool, here we can set the size of the pen. So at the moment we're in the orange, we'll go to black just to keep it sim simple. You can see we're in pen 1, so I'll do an example of that. So that's pen 1, pen 2, all already preset for you. Um, different type of, slightly different type of line. And you can see there. Now you can, if you want, change the minimum size, so if I put the minimum size, you can see the maximum size goes up with it, uh, of pen 1, and you can see you get a big blobby line like that. You can take the minimum size right down, so it, can, it depends on the pressure of your pen as to how thick it can go. Uh, you can also play around with the smoothness as well which kind of smooths out some of the kinks and edges and um, makes it a smoother line. 
Okay, so that's that's how you can mess with the brushes uh, and text we talked about before. So we're now into into the drawing mode. I'm just going to kill that drawing, and you can see here we've got it in the exposure sheets, and these are the sort of drawings, and you can kind of build up a significant amount of these drawings. Um, you know, for use in the animation, so it's kind of the place where you can sort of store the drawings in a way and keep them as they were in the original sense and uh, return to them to make it, make changes should you need to make them. Um, you know, once you're in the animation phase, which we're not at yet. So I'm going to kill that drawing, and with that, back to a simple drawing here. We can do some drawing now. What I want to do is to bring in something. I want to bring in um, an image because I'm going to be using it for um, I'm going to be using it for uh, a template as it were. So I'm going to grab my uh, Preston Blair walk cycle uh, and it asks me to do this. Now I can fit image to camera width if I tick that but I'm going to tick anyway because it will click in and there it imports. Now this is um, uh, a walk cycle uh, drawn in 1948 by a guy called Preston Blair who was uh, one of Disney's animators and also animated uh, Red Riding Hood in, in one of Tex Avery's pieces which is really good um, and went on to do stuff in Flintstones and all sorts of other stuff. But in 1948, he brought out this this kind of do-it-yourself, how to make animation, and sort of there's loads of fantastic drawings in there and kind of stuff. Uh, I think he did the hippo dance as well in Fantasia, and it, he he kind of, it, he's got this real sort of style to to his work, and he he did this animation book, and I remember getting it as a kid, and it just was obsessed by it. Uh, and it's one of the, the great bibles of animation. So you know you'll always hear animators talk about Preston Blair with a, a sort of godlike reverence, you know, because of his of his fantastic skill at animating. Anyway, this is something I nicked off him. Well, he <coughs> sampled, let's put it that way. Um, but it's only really as a template. But originally this was an eight cents. Um, you can see here. Uh, the ten frames. Uh, it was originally in in, in his book, um, animation, um, 1948 book, as an eight cycle, and there were two missing. But though I've just kind of mocked those in from opposites of the other ones. So uh, hoping that's all going to work. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, I'm going to use this as a template for a walk cycle, which is we're going to do as part of. Um, the animation section, but I'm going to use this um, the, this to be, develop my character that's going to do this walk cycle. Um, so I'm, I'm using it as a template, really, in a way, um, just to make sure I get it right. Nice, easy, cheap, but it's a good one. <clears throat> Lots of people use it. So what I'm going to do from this, really, is I'm going to I want to get this bigger. Now, first of all, I have to. <coughs> I have to then convert element to vector by double clicking on the actual element itself um, I can then do that and it's now converted it oops let's jump down put that back up there <coughs> converted it to a vector so now I can go on it I can uh, let's just select it all so now I've selected it, I can now change its size. Okay, and I want to make it big, so I've got a nice big character at the centre of my uh, page to start to use as a template um, for my initial ideas. So I'm kind of just expanding it. Probably an easier way of doing this, I expect. Someone will say, oh, you just got to press this button or do that. And, but there you go, that's my way of doing it. And I'm making it big. And I'm making it a bit wider as well, a bit thin. So keep doing that until that walk looks like 
this. Right and right. Dedicate this to Preston anyway. It's a kind of tribute. <laughs> right, so there we go. So I've got my guy there. Now he's the size of the drawing plane, if you can see. That's what I've sort of expanded it to because I want to have a nice big character on there. Um, so I'm going to start using that um, as my uh, template. 